Hello, my name is Roland Waterman and I am filling in for Pastor Jeff Peterson and you are watching Connect. And if you see the guest beside me, uh, don't change the channel. This is not a rerun. Tammy's back with us for a second week because after hearing her stories and testimony from a week ago, I asked her to, to come back and to, to do a second recording because I think it's important that she is able to have the opportunity to tell you how she grew into this because it, this doesn't just come on you overnight. And so welcome with me, Tammy. Yes. It's good to have you yes. back on the program this week. And she's got, she said after we'd finished the previous recording, she said, I've got so many other stories and testimonies that I could share. And I said, good, let's do another recording. So thank you for staying tuned this week and hearing what Tammy has to say to you, whether it's daytime or nighttime. But anyway, uh, Tammy, you, you, a week ago, you shared some amazing testimonies and stories of what God's done in your life and what you've seen him do. And you could probably talk for hours about that. But how did you, when you first started doing this, I think for the benefit of the viewers, how did you grow into this confidence? How did you grow into this boldness to where you would go to foreign countries and go all by yourself. I mean, that takes a lot of confidence and faith and peace that only God can give, but you didn't just leap into that. So can you share with the viewing audience how, if, if there was some kind of a step-by-step, -step, how you progressed into where you are at today? Where did you start and how did you move into this? Well, I think a big key is obedience. It's good. Obedience. You know, God says we're either obedience. He says this in um, uh, 1 Samuel 16. We're either obedient to God or we're in rebelliousness. Mm -hmm. So obedience is very important. That's good. And, and so if God told me, if I'd be busy sewing on something and he'd say, worship me right now. I would just drop everything and I'd get on my knees and I'd just be praising him. Yep. Okay. And, and, and he sent me out. They were simple mission trips. Now I would kind of laugh because... They seemed like a big thing back then, yep. but they were little trips around town where you'd say go. here, or, or he'd say here, I want you to share this with, um, with this customer. And it actually would be something that really touched them. Mm -hmm. And you know, some receive, it doesn't matter. If they receive or not, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you're being obedient to God and yes. you're doing what he tells you to do. Yes. It's up, for, up to him to do the healing. It's up to him to help them to hear it. We just gotta be obedient to him and do what he tells us to mm -hmm. do. And so that's what I do. I spent a lot of time worshiping him. Yes. I would put on, um, get uh, uh, the music that just draws you in close. Yes. Um, that soaking music. And I would do it. I would do it in the morning. I'd spend hours in the morning just worshiping the Lord. Get your yes. day started. Start your day with Jesus. Yes. You got to start the day with him. Yep. And I would do that. But then don't forget him throughout the day. That's you good. Know? Um, I, you, we don't have to leave the throne room. That's right. We don't have to leave it. You can stay in his presence all day long. That's right. You got to spend time with him. Just that conversation's going on with him. My, my, my kids said, I'm, I'm, you have, mom, you're, you have an obsession. <laughs> it's prayer. Yeah. That's what they told me. They've all said together, yeah, your obsession is prayer. And it's like, and they said, so mom, what's your new year's resolution this year? And I says to pray more. Yeah. It was to pray more and to trust him more. Yeah. You know, we got to trust God. Yeah. We really do. And, and I'm telling you, when you do that, just trust him. When he says, um, here, I want you to give this to so-and-so, this money to this, you yes. know, do it. Don't do it that you get a receipt. If you're looking at what the government's going to give you for your, what you can write off on your taxes, um, you're limiting God right there. When he tells you to give, give like he tells you. If he says, here, I want you to give money here, do it. Mm -hmm. If he tells you, here, I want you to share here, do it. That obedience, with that obedience, we get favor. That's right. We do. It is, it is a key issue. And you've got to learn the word. You've got to spend time in the word. And what you got um, yesterday is not good enough for today. What you got five years ago is not good enough for today. I don't care if you read that story five, 10, 20 times, you need to read it again. Just open it. I love it when I just open it up and he's like, I, and I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. wanting to know something. And all of a sudden he's like, whoa. I was like, oh my gosh, that's, wow, that's cool. You know where he gives you yeah. that rhema word and it's, it's right there. And I didn't even go looking for it. It's right, right there. Somebody's asking me a question and all of a sudden I just open and I'm like, wow. God, that's amazing. He gives me the answer right right there. I'd like for you to explain to them what a rhema word is because uh, we have the written word 
and you can read that and know what it says, but Rhema is when it becomes alive in you. It's yes. a quickening that the Holy Spirit yes. does. Yes, it's just like so strong. Like when I'm coming in the, to the mission trips, um, I found, found that I can't trust man because the, uh, finances are a hard thing for people to give up, but I can trust God. Mm -hmm. and, and I just stand and he'll, and, and the one that he's really put on me heavy is um, 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And it's, and God is able to make all grace abound towards That's you that right. you always that having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. Yes. And, and so that's a heavy one that he's like, that I grab a hold of that. Yes. And, and so um, it's like, it's the, like that word is just so strong yes. when you get it that you know it's yours. It's yes. like God saying, grab this, yes. stand it. It's my promise. This is a book of promises. promises. Yes. That's what it is. It's promises. And you know what? God says all his promises are yes and, and amen. amen. Yep. And that is if you're obedient to God. If you're obedient. Yes. Yeah. It's not so that you can have your agenda going on. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's obedience to him. And, and, and that's why I'm telling you some of these places that I could go to, I'm like, God, that food doesn't agree with me. Um, it's hot there. You know, you could think of all those things, you know. Um, I don't get the shower like I have at home um, and different yeah, things. Oh, sure. they have big spiders, you know, that go fast, you know, <laughs> and all these different things. But I'll tell you what, when you love him so much, when you are in so in awe of God, you will do it. Yes. You will be obedient to him. And it's just like, okay, it is temporary, yes. God. It's just temporary. But for you, I love you so much. I'm willing to go. I'm willing to be hands for you. I'm willing to be feet for yes. you. I'm willing to be a voice for you. I'm willing to be eyes and ears for you for yes. whatever you want to do. Yes. Now, Tammy, I want you to think back again, because there's probably people watching this program right now, and they can't imagine themselves being like you or doing what you do now. But where do they start? How... You, you said spend time with the Lord every day. I try to do that. Some days, I, I, I have to admit, I sleep in. I don't get as much time. But I have to make the connection with the Lord in the morning. And the second thing I have to do is rededicate my life to Him every mm -hmm. day. Every day, because I have a tendency to take my life back. Oh, this is what I want to do today. This is what I want to do. But ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want me to do today? And, and Lord, would you point out to me, I've got, Lord, this is where I'm going today. I'm going to the grocery store. I've got to stop at the bank. Lord, when I, as I go, would you point out people to me that you want me to say something to, a word of encouragement or a touch or anything? Is that yeah, so a good I, starting point? Yeah, I pray a prayer and it's, um, Lord, I command my mind, my body, come under alignment in my spirit. And I yes. command my spirit, come under alignment with Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. And, and Lord, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. And Lord, have your way in me today. Here I am. Um, I'm surrendered to you. Um, how do you want to use me today? Yep. And he will just, he opens doors. Yep. And, 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 and they might be little doors at first. But then they become big doors yes. and they become double doors. Bigger doors. Yes. You know, like that one trip, it was, um, it was Thailand, Pakistan and Myanmar. Mm -hmm. And even now I'm coming up into Africa and, and this, this trip, he's opening double doors. It's not just, he was showing me Uganda, but it's also Kenya. Wow. And so he will open the bigger doors and sometimes he closes doors. He doesn't work, we're going in a direction he doesn't want us to go, mm -hmm. so he'll close it. Or, you know what, God gets to change his plans. Maybe right. somebody else didn't do what he wanted them to do right. in their disobedience, so now he's going to send you that right. direction. Allow God to change plans. Right. You know, um, do that. And um, something else that God took me through is uh, forgiveness. And, yes. and so what he did is he um, took me through my life. And so before I was ever born, because we don't know what people have said about us before we were even born. Right. And so he, he had me go. Um, I mean, I took several days doing it where I would forgive people of things they had said about me mm -hmm. before I was ever born. You know, you wow. don't know what they said. Right. You know, they, they said, the you know, womb. yeah, um, you know, maybe you should get an abortion or you don't know what was said if they were angry or even, um, you know, as you were being while you were in the mother. So what he did is he took me before I was in the mother's womb and I'm forgiving people. I'm forgiving them and, and, and blessing them. And then he took me while I was in the mother's womb. 
Yes. And I'm forgetting, we don't know if, if, if our mother fell. We don't know if she was pushed by somebody or somebody was very mean to Trauma. her. Trauma. Right. So, so I went through that. And then I did it from when I was um, zero to five, then five to ten. And I went through my whole life wow. like that and forgave people. And he will show you. And he might even bring something back to you and, and tell it's, you to do that again. Might even be painful. Right. When he brings but I'm telling you, forgiveness is, is good. It's good. You can't hold on to that stuff. It will weigh you down. It brings in bitterness and offense, and, and it's, you're going to end up with disease. I mean, I've had people come to me, and, I've, and I've, I've prayed with them, and they could barely even walk. And I told them, you know, I said, there's somebody back when you were five years old that you need to forgive. And, and they told me I can't do it. They would rather hold on to that, go through what they're going through right now, because I knew that was their healing. Right. Forgiveness is healing. Yes. And that's what happened with me is as I was forgiving many people, I had to forgive throughout my life yes. of things they had done to me, very horrible things that hurt. And, and so um, you wanted me to share this testimony. Um, I went on an outreach and um, well, actually nobody would come near me because it was just so much Jesus. So I decided to go out on my own. And I, and I met this man that was in a wheelchair and his leg was amputated at the knee and, um, and the Lord had me um, come before him. And I, I always get low. Always get your body so that you're looking up to their face. Right. Um, don't look down on people. Always try to look up to them. Yes. And, and if you have to, if you have to bow yourself, if you have to get on your knee to do mm -hmm. it, do it. I've been on beaches in Thailand where I've literally had to um, um, almost get on the ground so I could look up yep. to somebody. But it gives you favor. It does. Um, it's honoring it's the person. It's showing honor. Yep. Yes. And, and so um, I did that. And this man... Um, I asked him, you know, he, he told me he knew Jesus, and I asked him, I said, what happened? And he said that there was an argument over a woman, and um, later the man, him and another man were having this argument, and later that man came back and shot him in the leg, and he had to have his leg amputated. And I was like, wow. I said, I bet you that really hurt. And he said, yeah. And I said, well, were you able to forgive the man? And he said, no. And, and, I, and I said, well, you know, I said, I've had to forgive a lot of people. I have. I've had to forgive a lot of people that have done harmful things to me. Mm -hmm. and, and, I, and, and, and sometimes I even got to forgive. I even got to forgive pastors sometimes, you know. Yep. I mean, I'm talking. They're people too, you know. That's right. Um, but you always forgive. God showed me that. And, and, and this man, what he did is his, um, I told him what Jesus paid on the cross for us. You know, he, he was beaten. He took every lash for us. Um, he, he, he was on the cross. He took our place on the cross. And he went down into the pit of hell for us. Yes. He did. And, and, um, and, you know, there's times where I went through things that were very painful. And the Lord showed me it was just a nick. And I was like, just a nick? That really hurt. That really hurt. You call that a nick? Yeah. You know? And he said, no, it was just a nick. Momentary light affliction. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but you know what? When I thought about it, and I thought what Jesus paid, he paid for the whole world. Yes. He took every affliction, every sin. He took the wrath of God on the cross for us. Yes. He took every slap. I mean, what Jesus paid for and that what I went. Yeah. You know what? It was a nick. Mm -hmm. It is just a nick. And yeah. it showed me to be able to forgive. And this man right there, when I shared that, he forgave the man right You're like that. Like, wow. Yeah. And then the Lord showed me something else. Um, so I have, a, I have a donation jar that I have in my business. And I set that donation jar out. And for, so what he did for me to help me to remember of forgiving, because we can forget to do it, mm -hmm. and then we get offended, and then we get bitter, and then we get sick. So what he showed me is um, every time I had to forgive somebody, to put a quarter, that was my, my tithe, <laughs> to put a quarter in the donation jar, and then I would use that yeah. to go on mission work, right? And sometimes, if I wasn't near my mission jar, I would be taking a tally. Oh, boy. And then some days I just, I was like, oh, my gosh, okay, God, I'll just put $10 into it because I lost track. Mm -hmm. But I was forgiving, and he was showing me how to remember to forgive. Wow. When that ugly comes at you, forgive immediately. Can you, would you uh, pause right now and pray with anyone who's viewing this who's been hurt and has not been able to release their hurt? Would you minister to them and just uh, lead them in a prayer? to forgive that person. Yes. Can you do that? Yes. 
So, so Father God, Lord, I just ask for you, anyone, Lord, that is dealing with unforgiveness, yes, Lord. That, that, Lord, that you would just overflow them in your love right now. You, Let Lord. wave after wave of your love come crushing upon them, Lord, yes, Lord. Um, that they will be able to forgive. Whatever it was, God, whatever harm that came to them, whether they were raped, um, uh, beaten, whatever came upon their bodies, they'll be able to forgive that person, Lord. Just let so much of your love, because it's yes, your love Lord. that does that, that you would tender every heart, God, that you right now you would circumcise their hearts um, and, and just pour in more of your love right now, God, you, to be able to forgive, so just like you, you, you do, God, because you tell us we're supposed to forgive, and we're supposed to forgive and forgive and forgive. It's something we're going to have to do throughout our yes, life. Lord. And so I just say, God, yes, help Thank us you, to, to walk in forgiveness, because that load comes off yes, of us. Yes, Lord. And it brings Set healing to our bodies. And so God help us, each of us, to, to forgive like you forgive. And I just call that forth for marriages yes, because a lot of people want to run from their marriage. Yes, they let Lord. offense come in and pretty soon they're getting divorced and, and, and the enemy's yes. got them coming at each other. And so God, um, I know that in marriage, um, um, you're going to learn how to forgive like Jesus forgives. Yes. You're going to, you're going to, this isn't somebody that Thank you can you run away from. They're right there with you all the time. And, and God, just show us how to forgive each other. Yes, Lord. And, and, and move forward in you. Thank you, Lord. Move forward in you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Because yes. unforgiveness is a prison. Yeah, it is. It's a prison that we keep ourselves locked in. And when we think about what Christ has forgiven us of, you know, even good people have things that they need to be forgiven of. Yeah. And, but anyhow, I wanted to talk about relationship because for me, relate, my ongoing relationship with Jesus is what makes it so natural to talk about him to other people and, and sh reveal him to other people and share him with other people because he's a real person to me. So you said spend time with the Lord every morning. Yes, and what I do is I leave soaking music on all day long. So if people come into my office, there is, there's um, Christian music on, mm -hmm. okay? It's, 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 it's not other, it is mm -hmm. Christian music and everybody will find what kind of music they like. Right. You know, whatever it is that pulls you closer to him, um, have that on and, and so I'm just in it all the time. It doesn't right. leave, you know, it's just constant in his presence and I'm praying as I'm working on things. Yes. Um, it's a constant communication going on. Jesus is not hanging up the phone, okay? Right. It's us that hangs up the phone. Yep. Um, he wants to talk to you all the time and he wants you to experience him. He wants you to taste him. He wants you to hear him. He wants you to see more. Um, he wants you to feel the anointing coming yes, over him. He amen. wants all your, he designed our senses to experience him. Yes. And, and so um, um, as you press in this, you will. Yes. And, and surround yourself with people that are um, flowing in that, that are very strong yes. in their faith walk because what they have should lift you up and help you to, um, to grow in that. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And, you know, it's simple. I think that, um, and I, you know, I don't know who, uh, I don't know who you are that are watching and I don't know where you've been, where you go to church or where you've been raised in church or I don't know what you may believe, but religion binds people. It binds people to a set of do's and don'ts, but Jesus came to set us free. Now he does, he does ask us to be obedient to his word and to follow him, but having a relationship with Jesus is simple and he is real. You get to know him through meditation in the word of God. And um, I always tell people if they've never read the Bible. I said, read the book of John and or then go to 1 John. And because it, it reveals Jesus, because it's important that Jesus becomes real to you. I was having physical therapy yesterday, and I've never asked this young woman if she went to church. So I said, can I ask you, do you go to church somewhere? She says, no, I was a confirmed so-and-so. And I said, so, so you don't go to church anymore? No, I just didn't find it appealing. It didn't, didn't do anything for me. I said, well, you know, until you have a relationship with Jesus, nothing, it's just going, it's just ritual. But God wants you to know him. 
He wants you, he wants Jesus to be real to you and for you to have an ongoing daily relationship with him. If you, if you feel like you're doing everything right, but you don't have the relationship, if you don't feel the intimate connection with him, I urge you to, to, to seek God with all your heart and say, Lord, I want to know you. Because it's out of that knowing him, it's out of that relationship with him that we live this. This is a living experience every day. It's not up here in our head, it's in here, mm -hmm. in our heart. Yes, yes, and you know, he's got a scripture and he says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind yep. and put on the new man created according to God in true righteousness and yes. holiness. And so that means, you know, those cartoons, I remember when we were little, there was a car, here you got a good angel over here yep. and he's seen all those good thoughts and then here you got the devil <laughs> over here telling you those nasties and yeah. he's, he's telling you all the lies, okay? Yeah. He's speaking those lies, but you gotta know when it's lies. And so I just, Lord, I just speak discernment into the body of believers, yes. that they'll be able to discern when it's you speaking and when it's the darkness speaking, um, yeah. that they're not gonna listen to that little devil that's standing there that's telling them all those lies. Instead, they're gonna, they're gonna um, take their thoughts captive. And you can just say that. I take my thoughts captive right now in Jesus' name. Yeah. And then think about Jesus. I'm talking, just think about sitting right in the throne room with Jesus. Just mm -hmm. sitting in his lap and drawing into his arms. You yes. can do this. Yes. Just some people don't know they can do that. Yeah. That's you can sit on his lap. I sometimes <laughs> lift people up and I said, here, Jesus, I'm setting them on your lap. Just wrap your loving arms around them yes. and help them know how they're loved. Just think like a daddy with his daughter yes. or son. What does he want to do? A good daddy. Mm -hmm. He wants to hold his children. He yep. wants to love on him. Well, God wants to do that with you, too. Right. Uh, two things that I want to make sure we cover yet. Yeah, one is what these are. Oh, sure. I want you to share about your prayer clause and explain to them where that comes from in the Bible. And then I want you to um, give them maybe like a step-by-step -step suggestion on what they can do to begin to progress in this and yes. become, become one of those witnesses for Jesus. Yes. Yeah. So um, I, I had no idea when I started making these, you know, um, I started out making uh, prayer mantles. And so Elijah had a prayer mantle and yep. Elisha knew the power in that. And so he grabbed a hold of Elijah's when he went, went up. Yep. yep. And, and so, um, so it's very scriptural. And, and, you know, some people will say they're, they, they think they got to copy my idea. And I'm like, no, you don't. Because if you're anointed to do it, God is going to give you your own. You have creativity. The Holy Spirit is creative. Mm -hmm. And so um, he's going to show you how to make yours. Right. They don't have to be like mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I started out making uh, prayer blankets, actually. Mm. Um, and we, we took them to children in some very poor areas and just gave them away. Okay, and we wrote mm -hmm. scriptures inside the blankets, wow. sealed in the blankets. And then he put these mantles on, and I was asking people, I was like, where do I go to find out about this? You know, and they're like, oh, go talk to that guy. He's got wisdom. He had no clue, you know? And so I talked to the Holy Spirit. Yes. And he knows, okay? Yeah. So ask the Holy Spirit. And so he had me start making the mantles, and I don't have one of those with me. But what he does is he leads you through, for me, he has me write scripture. Some people crochet them, they knit them, and they're praying as they're doing them. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I actually write scriptures in mine. And so the Lord will take me through. It'll speak to the person, the design and everything. Um, and he'll, he'll give me all kinds of symbolic things to, you know, God is a, he's a God of symbols. Yes, very And so he so. will show me and it will speak to the person that I'm giving them to. So when I go to these nations, I usually bring mantles and I bring a lot of these and many people get healed. It's from Acts 19 that he said through Paul, he did unusual miracles yes. and that the handkerchiefs and the aprons that touched Paul that others got, they were healed. The diseases left them yes. and the evil spirits left yes. them and so um, I have uh, taken these around the world they've gone to um, over 44 nations and um, 30 different states and it's just amazing the people that God has put in my path one man um, I, I they found out about me from Texas I went into Wisconsin and he was in the ICU and I gave one prayed for him and he was um, he almost died twice he was on a ventilator and he walked out of the hospital totally healed 
Wow. You know, another gal that got one that was came, came to one of my um, uh, events that I was doing a fundraiser, and um, she was um, she was moving her head, and I was like, "What's going on?" She said, "I couldn't do that before. She had arthritis, and um, she was totally healed of it." And yeah. I said, "And don't you receive it anymore in Jesus' name?" Amen. But I've seen many people get healed, and I feel like it is. Um, we are linking shields in power and authority. So it's um, um, others like Job when he prayed for his friends, God blessed him back double. I always pray, tell people, those that I know understand it, to pray for the others right. that have these. And what we're doing is we are strengthening everybody, the body of believers. It's us coming in unity, in prayer power, yes. um, um, to strengthen each other. Because even if that person can only pray the little prayer, another one knows how to pray the bigger prayer. And it, we're blessing each other right. and growing God's kingdom. So it's very powerful. So any person, you, if you have faith in God, you could take like a handkerchief or a cloth and you could, and maybe you've got a sick person or maybe you've got a rebellious uh, teenager or uh, a family member that has an addiction or something and, and they need to experience the power of God. And you can lay your own hands on that cloth and pray over it and ask God to anoint it and slip it into their bed sheet yeah. And when they sleep at night, that anointing that's in you that's been imparted to the cloth will will be released to them as they sleep. Pray over their laundry. Yep. <laughs> so I, we, we're just about out of time. And uh, so I want you to, there, you uh, can get in contact with Tammy if you have questions, right? If it's like, yes. Tammy, here's where I'm at. What could I do? Where, how do I start? Where do I start in my ministry of outreach? Could they do that? Yes, yes. Yes. And you've got time to respond to, to an email or right. you could refer them, recommend other resources even yes. for them. But make a decision to begin to bear fruit. We're all called to bear fruit, are we not? We are. We are. And it's, you're called to do much, so much more than just attend church. God bless you for doing that. But there's people that need what you have and it's your time to give it away. Yeah, get up and go for Jesus. Yep, amen. Well, it's been good to have you on the program again. And I, I want to thank you, Tammy, for, for doing this second interview because our goal is to empower people like yourself, to empower you with faith and confidence to make a difference in the, in the uh, sphere of influence that you have. And I'm talking about your workplace I'm talking about your neighborhood. If you belong to civic clubs or organizations and you meet wherever, there's people, there's opportunity. And if you meet with the Lord, as Tammy said every morning, and say, God, clothe me with your spirit today. Pour your love into my heart. Point out to me the people you want me to touch today with your love. Amen. Amen. And Amen. always walk in love. Always walk in love. Tammy, yes. God bless you. Okay. Thank you so much. Amen.